everyone! Welcome to Clover Bud Fridays! It's Rachel here, and we're gonna look at a really awesome experiment on the science of sound. Did you know that sound travels in waves just like the waves you see in water? Sound travels very quickly, up to 770 miles per hour. Compare that to a car that only travels at 55 to 75 miles per hour on the highway. Have you ever wondered how sound travels to our ears? And what do you think sound looks like? We're gonna check that out today. Even though we cannot see sound moving, we can do activities where we are able to simulate the sound waves and see how they move. So today we're going to look into this. So first and foremost, so we can investigate sound waves, we're gonna take a metal bowl like I have done here. I have used the smallest metal bowl that I have. I put plastic wrap over the top of the bowl. I secured mine with a hair tie because I don't have any rubber bands here at home. So what kind of musical instrument do you think this looks like? I think it looks personally like a drum. So I've set my, my bowl on a table or flat surface and I've sprinkled a few pieces of rice on the top of my plastic wrap. Then I'm going to take a cookie sheet and I'm going to hit the top of it with a wooden spoon. What happened to the rice on top of the drum? You might have noticed that when I hit the cookie sheet with my wooden spoon, the rice jumped also. The sound of the spoon hitting the cookie sheet caused sound vibrations that travel through the air. Did you hear the spoon hitting the cookie sheet? Probably. As the sound waves hit your ears, it caused you to hear that sound. Some of the sound waves also moved downward toward your drum and the sound waves created movement in both your ears and on the plastic wrap causing the rice to move. Now that you've seen sound waves in motion, let's take a closer look at air and how it can make different sounds. So in the activity that I'm gonna post in the comments, we're going to look at how to make our own pan flute. I'm going to post the pan flute template. This will give you all the directions on how to make your own pan flute like I did here. So when you make your pan flute, you are going to need straws, you're going to need white paper, you're going to need double-sided tape or glue sticks, you're going to want duct tape or masking tape, you're going to want a ruler, or if you don't have a ruler at home, you can check and see if you guys have any tools and you can use a measuring tape. Or you can see if you have any sewing tools and use a measuring tape like this, whatever's easiest. You're also going to want a marker or a pen and some scissors. So once you've made your pan flute, you can talk about what happens when you blow across the top of the pan flute. So think about how is that sound being made? And think about if the length of the straws affect the sounds it makes. Does my longer straw sound different than my shortest straw? And why is that? Or think about other instruments that use wind to make sounds. What kind of other instruments are there? You might say a flute, a trumpet, a saxophone. You might even say a harmonica or even a whistle. So connecting this to 4-H since it is Clover Butt Friday, just like the length of the straws, 4-H involves all sizes of youth members. So a five-year-old can start as a clover butt and take a clover butt project, or you can have a senior in high school taking a more advanced project. Is the senior more important than our clover buds? No. We love you all whatever age you are. We just want to see you grow. So a 4-H program needs all sizes of members. We want members of different backgrounds. We want this so we can be the most awesome and inclusive group that we can be. So as my friends from the show Out of the Box used to sing, So long, farewell to you, my friends. So long, farewell, 
Until we meet again, I said so long, farewell to you, my friends. So long, farewell, until we meet again. Bye!